Well, a couple of years ago, we sort of started our coffee journey, or at least our modern coffee journey, when we purchased the Cafe Lot robot, handmade espresso machine, which we, we dearly loved, so cute. And along with the robot, we sort of decided to go right down the handmade uh, trail. We bought the Kinu Phoenix grinder. At the time, this was a relatively new grinder, um, very reasonable in price, under $300 Canadian. And it's a really, really high quality grinder, really well suited to espresso, and especially the uh, robot. Because we found over the years that even within a week or so of getting our beans, they start to change in terms of how we have to grind them. And one of the great things about the Kinu is that the grind adjust is right on the top. It's stepless and it's very easy to make small adjustments to the grind because as the beans oxidize and age in, we can feel the difference on the handles when we're, when we're pressing down. We can sense the flow rate um, and we can then make minute adjustments. Here on the Kino, it's really quick and easy. You just loosen one knob, twist the other, lock it back down, and you can make very small adjustments. So the Kino is perfectly suited to working with the Cafe Lot robot. Then things evolved. I found that, first of all, if we had guests over for dinner, Right. I would sort of dread the thought of people saying, oh, let's have a coffee, because that meant I'd spend the next half an hour in the kitchen making single espressos for, for everybody, hand grinding them, hand making them. It just wasn't practical for a crowd. And we love having people over for dinner and coffee. Is, my whole family are coffee drinkers. So that's, you know, that was part of the, the issue. So we decided that it was time to get an electric grinder uh, for making larger batches of coffee. So at that time, there was no real sort of what I'll call a hybrid grinder, right? There, there were grinders that were really well suited for espresso, like this or the, you know, the more they were much more expensive, espresso tailored electric grinders. Um, but there wasn't anything that could do espresso to pour over. So we decided to get the Barazza Encore. Right? It's a great, it's a classic grinder. It's been around for a long time. It has a great reputation. And for under $200 Canadian, it's a really top-notch grinder. It's got great burrs in it. And for our Chemex brewer or for French press, the Barazza Encore was a really, really great choice. And it's very economical, under $200 Canadian. And so we sort of had, <laughs> we were running with sort of two grinders. We have the hand grinder for making our espressos in the morning and for me in the afternoon, in the evening. But if we want a larger batch of coffee, a liter or so to serve our guests, we have either French press or the Chemex with the Barazza Encore. And that was great. Then I started hearing rumors about new grinders coming out that could handle everything from French press, uh, pour overs, and espresso. And the first one that seemed to hit the market was this one. And this is the Opus from Fellow, the Fellow Opus. And let's face it, as soon as I heard about the Fellow Opus, I, I put in my order for one before they even hit the market because I was so excited by the idea of having one grinder that could potentially cover everything from our now trusty daily robot to making Chemex or French press, depending on my, my mood. So, the Opus arrived. 
very excited. And it is, well, one thing I love about this is the design is really beautiful and elegant. It's, it's, a, it's very much a fellow design. The, the large cylinder, the you know, sort of rectangular shape at the back. Um, it's a little, um, let's say, lightweight uh, execution for fellow. It's all plastic, but it's very, very good quality. It looks beautiful on the counter. It has a really beautiful, typical of fellow, magnetically positioned grinds cup. And they very ingeniously created an espresso cup. So that it's a dosing cup, so you can put your, uh, put your uh, dosing cup here, flip it over, and dose your espresso. Works beautifully. And, uh, and this is for your regular grinding. So, and it, you know, ingeniously, they put a nice little pouring spout for the grinds inside. There's a little pouring spout inside for the grinds to pour out. It's really, it's very well executed and thought out. Except for one factor. As we started using it, um, I realized that now that I could easily go back and forth between, um, you know, espresso grinding and, you know, pour over or French press, I actually wanted to make those adjustments more often than I did before because I'll have a couple of espressos in the morning and then as I'm working away during the day I want to have a larger cup of coffee so I'd like to make say a pour over or a french press and uh, recently we actually found bought an aeropress we were traveling and we decided to take this with us and now I'm addicted to making aeropresses and so I found myself constantly changing the grind settings from espresso to a much coarser gr grind for pour overs or even for French press. And that's where I started to get a little bit frustrated with the fellow because on the front of the fellow, you have these settings for your big steps and they are stepped. And they're fairly large steps going from very fine espresso grinds to relatively coarse grinds for, say, a French press. But with the Café Lot robot, as I explained, we have to make very, very fine, minute adjustments to accommodate the beans even as they age in, or if we're using different beans, which we sometimes do. So the very fine adjustments on this are accomplished inside the machine. That means you have to have no beans in the hopper, which is fine because we measure our doses for each batch. But in order to make fine adjustments, you have to remove the lid and then inside the unit is this blue ring. And in order to adjust that, you have to sort of press down and rotate just the blue ring, which is a little fiddly. It's actually a lot fiddly, trying to make those adjustments. And then it, it sort of shifts where that paddle sits on here. And so trying to make small, minute adjustments for the robot and then go, you know, back to a coarser grind and then back to a finer grind, it was really hard to keep track of what we were doing. And people have, you know, there's been various videos of people explaining, oh, well, you know, this, these settings are like 15 minute steps and these are the larger ones. And I looked at a bunch of videos, but I just found it really frustrating to have to, you know, if I, if I ran an espresso and it seemed a little bit too fast to make the small adjustment required, I had to, you know, dig in here, fiddle with this. It works. And it works, I mean, it gives a great control over the grind, but it's just a little fiddly to execute. So I would say that if you're looking for a grinder that will do espresso and say occasionally you want to have a coarser grind for a pour over 
whether you're doing a big pour over like this or something smaller. And if it's not a daily thing for you, this opus would work beautifully because the grind for the espresso is great. And I'd say for a lot of espresso machines that aren't quite as finicky as the robot, it's gonna work fine. I think most people don't tweak their grind with almost every cup. So I think this would work for a lot of people, a lot of situations. But I found it a little frustrating. And then I heard rumors of the new Barazza Encore ESP. <laughs> and I thought ESP, ESP, oh, espresso. So this one is very ingenious. What they've done, and I don't know how they engineered this because I don't know how you adjust pitches on threads and stuff like that, but the trick with this one is it has a total of 40 settings from zero to 40. The first 20 settings from zero to 20 are espresso settings, right? And they there are steps, but there are clicks, but the changes from click to click are very minute in the espresso range. They're very small and they allow us to make small enough adjustments so that we can get the robot functioning just the way we want it. If it's a little bit too slow coming through, like one click coarser will do the trick to bring the espresso time down to under 30 seconds or so. So it, this, these fine steps here work beautifully. And then as you rotate past 20, there's steps here as well, but they represent a much larger change in grind setting. I don't exactly remember the the various, the, the, the various adjustment numbers, but these are a very, very fine adjustment in terms of the fineness of the grind. So it's a very small adjustment to the distance between the two uh, parts of the grinder. And then these are a much coarser adjustment. And this gives you a very large range of grind sizes all the way from literally, I mean, I can grind so fine on this that I can't even force the water through the coffee on the, um, the robot. I mean, it goes, I'd say it goes to like a Turkish coffee fineness, a really, really fine sand powder, finer than I could possibly ever use with this, which is great. Um, we tend to be around uh, for, the robot, we tend to be around between 10 and eight. And there's like four clicks in there. Sometimes as the, as the beans get a little older, we have to grind a little bit finer, but we're never down to the zero setting. We're never anywhere near the zero setting. And the adjustments are fine enough that it works perfectly with the robot. And then if I want to do a, uh, a Chemex, I'll bring it up to, they recommend say a 30 for a Chemex. I go a little bit finer, so I'm sort of in the middle between 20 and 30. With the French press, I'll go a little bit coarser than 30, say 32, 34, and that gives a nice nice grind for the, for the French press um, that doesn't come through the mesh too much. And then I find with the AeroPress, AeroPress recommends a grind that's just sort of in between, say, a pour over grind and an espresso grind. And I found that to be very good right around the 20 mark, or just a couple of little clicks finer than 20 for the AeroPress. Works beautifully. So as you can see, we're using the full range of, of well, almost the full range of grind settings. Um, I was sort of seeing an article recently about Turkish coffee and thinking, hmm, may want to experiment with that, in which case I'll probably be going finer than we normally make for espresso. So I've been very pleased with this. Now you'll notice I have the single, what's called the single dose hopper. 
on here because we measure and single dose our coffee for all the different brewing techniques that we use. This is the hopper that comes with both the Encore and the Encore ESP. Um, and it's designed to, you know, pile in a bunch of coffee and then time your, your grind uh, to get your dose, which works just fine. But I like to measure my dose going in and sometimes coming out. So I use the single dose grinder, works beautifully. And the nice thing about it is it's nice and sturdy. So you feel okay giving it a tap to knock down any beans that may have sort of stuck in the hopper. I find this grinder is very consistent, very, very little uh, retention. Um, when you change, uh, I always change the grind size with the motor running, and they recommend that in the instructions. And um, I find sometimes there's a little bit of retention from one grind to another. So if you're really, really finicky about it, you might just run a little bit of coffee through just to exit that. Um, I just do my next, my next grind and just measure coming out and that, that works fine. Uh, it comes with this handy hopper, but it also has an espresso dosing cup, which it's a really cool idea because of course this matches your um, espresso holder, which is great so you can sort of invert your holder on it, flip it over, and it makes a nice, neat deposition. But the one thing that I found problematic with it is this sits in here. There's a lot of distance between where the coffee comes out and the top of the little doser. And even using a spritz of water, because I always spritz the beans with just a little bit of water to keep static down, because otherwise the bean dust goes everywhere. <laughs> but even with that, there's enough space here that a little bit of the grinds escape. And I always end up with a, a little dusting of grinds. And so I would say, Baratza, if you're listening, just this little base that holds this, if it were a little bit thicker, like had some height, if this were up here and the dosing cup sat just underneath the output, that would be perfect. I was thinking of, of manufacturing one of these or somehow and raising it, um, which would be handy. But I find with the Coffee Lot Robot, I just grind into this hopper and because the robot has a very deep coffee holder because you're putting the coffee in, tamping it and then putting water on top of it, just using this and I just knock the beans or the grinds into it, flows in beautifully and then I um, WDT it and tamp it. That works just fine for the robot. If you're working with a regular basket, you may end up spilling a little bit. Um, but if you had a, uh, a collar, one of the collars for your regular basket so that when you WDT, it doesn't spill out, that would probably work just fine. But as I say, if they made this just a little bit deeper, so that this sat a little closer to the outlet, that would be perfect for this dosing cup. And it's a nice little dosing cup. So, right now, we're working with just the Baratza ESP using a wide range of grinds, and it's covering everything from our Coffee Lot Robot to Aeropress, Chemex, and even French Press. So, depending on my mood and how much coffee I want to drink and who we're serving, how many people we have, I have a whole choice of brewing methods and a grinder that will cover the whole range. So I think this, especially for the Coffee Lot Robot, is the perfect, I'll call it the Goldilocks grinder, because it covers all the range of what we need. And we still use the Kinu, um, particularly in the morning if one of us is up 
and the other one is still sleeping. We're, we, have, we live in a fairly open space, so the Kinu is great for grinding when you want to keep the noise down, because this, this does make some noise. Um, and also, it's still nice to do the sort of hand grinding, especially in the morning when you're waking up and just, you know, starting your day. You don't really need this big noise in your ears waking you up. This is a really nice sort of contemplative option. In terms of recommendations, if you want to hand grind your coffee and you're just making espresso, the Kinu is an excellent grinder. Very good value, beautifully built, and does great espresso and very easy to adjust. We're still enjoying using the Kinu. Uh, but if you're looking for something that's an electric grinder, a little faster, a little, a little easier on your arms, we've been very, very pleased with the Baratza ESP for everything from the robot to French press. It does it all, and I can highly recommend it as a very um, effective and economical grinder. So, we have achieved grinder happiness.